Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So, today we're going to make this little bug. I'm going to do mine in a different color this time. But, our little Herbie the Love Bug. Let's jump right into this. I am using, for the body of the bug, I'm going to use this mint. It's Craft Smart, and that's the color... That's the color of it, is mint. And for the bumpers, I'm going to use this gray. It's Craft Smart, and it's literally just gray. Easy peasy to remember. So, we're going to start with the body of the car, the biggest part. I'm using a 4mm. Um, this yarn does not call for a 4mm. I'm actually going down in hook size because we're building this amigurumi. So whatever your yarn calls for, go down in hook size. Don't don't just assume a four millimeter is going to be fine because you could be using yarn that is supposed to have a four millimeter used with it. Uh, amigurumi is done in um, a tighter a tighter weave. So we're gonna start with the magic ring. And you're going to put six single crochets in there. Your next round, we're just going right into the stitch. We're not slip stitching or chaining. This is what amigurumi is. No slip stitch or chaining. And if you're new and you're going to watch this video because you don't know whether you should do this, do it. It's super duper easy and I'll walk you through every single bit of it. Go right into this very first stitch and put two single crochets in the same space. So whenever you see anything on my page written with brackets around it, it usually means it's a special sequence or it means the same space or the counts, like my the counts for the end of rows. So after the first stitch, that's where the marker goes and you're going to put your second stitch in there. And then you're going to put two single crochets in each of the stitches all the way around. So you should have a total of 12 stitches when you're done. Your next round is going to be one single crochet and an increase. And this will bring you up to 18 stitches. So your first single crochet is what gets the marker. And then your next stitch is going to get the increase, which is two single crochets in the same space. So you're going to see this written as a big capital INC, that means increase. So I repeat this all the way around, one single crochet, two single crochets. So you should end your sequence off at just before your marker, which should be two single crochets, should be the increase. If you haven't, you've did something wrong, but as long as you have 18 stitches, it's not really going to matter. Your next round is going to be two single crochets and an increase. This will bring you up to 24 stitches, so that's number one. That's number two. And then the next stitch gets the increase of two single crochets in the same space. And repeat. Your 
Your next round is going to be three single crochets in an increase. So that's number one. That's three single crochets, and then your next stitch gets the increase, which is two single crochets in the same space. And repeat. At the end of this row, you should have 30 stitches. Your next round is going to be four single crochets and an increase. This is going to be your last increase round. That's number one. That's four single crochets. And then your next stitch will get the increase of two single crochets in the same space. And repeat. So this is what you should have. It looks pretty small, huh? Hard to believe that that builds this. But considering how much stuff we put around the outside of it, the body kind of needed to be small. I had gone bigger when I was designing it and it was just too big. You need a, you know, a child's hand to hold on to it, right? Or even a good display size too, because mine's just going to be for display. I really super duper like my beetles, so I have little buttons, little one button, daisy buttons that you can buy on Amazon, and uh, I'm not going to sew them on, I'm just going to glue them on, but uh, that's what I have coming, And but I mean they're coming from China, so they're not going to be here for like 30 days, um, so I just thought I'd do the video anyway without my daisy buttons, but um, from here for the next 20 rows... You should have 36 stitches, and you're going to put one single crochet in each of these 36 stitches for 20 rows. And uh, so I'm going to see you <laughs> on the other side. This is what you should have. I'm just going to put some more stuffing in mine. I was kind of stuffing as I went. So we're going to start decreasing now. Close this up. So your first round is going to be four single crochets and a decrease. number one that's my four single crochets and then my decrease is going to be invisible so on the front loops only so pick up the front loop of that first stitch come around pick up the front loop of that second stitch yarn over pull through those two and then finish your stitch that's an invisible decrease that's what I'm going to do you can do whatever decrease you want to do. So repeating this all the way around will give you 30 stitches when you're done. Your next round is going to be three single crochets and a decrease. And this will bring you down to 24 stitches. That's number one. That's three single crochets and then you decrease. So repeat this all the way around and I will see you on the other side.
Your next round is going to be two single crochets and a decrease. This will bring you down to 18 stitches. That's number one, number two, and then your decrease. Repeat this all the way around and I will see you on the other side. So your last round, <coughs> sorry I was trying to suppress that cough, your last round is going to be one single crochet and a decrease, that's number one, and then we jump right into your decrease. So this takes you down to 12 stitches where we started. So you can pass it off. So I'll just go into your next stitch, do a slip stitch, yarn over. Just need a weaving tail and a cinching tail. So finish stuffing yours. So I don't really want to overstuff, but I do want to make sure for my cinching that this is full because you don't want any wrinkly parts. So just make sure it's full all around this area because it has to look like this, right? I mean, you can never get it to look like that. That'd be nice, but... So mine's pretty full. So you're going to go in the front loop and out the front loop of your next stitch, just like that, all the way around. Then I'm going to pull so I got to secure that so I'm going to pop across and I'm going to go through the loop I'm going to wiggle because it tightens that's not right down so I just wiggle back and forth a couple of times and then I'm going to pop across the other way make another knot and wiggle that down. So that's what it should look like. So as close as we can get it, not quite. So anyway, you can weave, which is going in as close as you can to your lead. So like literally the next stitch over. So it looks like a stitch. So when you pull, that just looks like a stitch. That's it right there. So, suggested weaving in three different directions. I like to actually split the yarn when I weave. So instead of going up and down through holes, I like to just poke my way through. I just find it's a better hold if the fibers are going to get jacked up on, you know, caught on each other. If fibers get caught Nobody's pulling anything to open anything, so cut that off. And this is now the start of our car. So this is going to be quick and easy from here on out. This is the, the longest thing that took the longest. So next we need to make the carriage 
this part of the car. This is all stuffed in here. So a part of it looks like obviously the trunk down here, which is not the trunk. That's where the engine is. This is the trunk. Um, so this is the part we need to make right now. This is built flat. So I'm going to still stay with my, my mint color. So you need to chain five and do four single crochets back up. Chain one, turn your work. In your first stitch, I want you to put two single crochets. Now I've pulled up my straggler after pulling it tight, my slip knot. I'm going to be weaving that in. So two single crochets in the first stitch. Two sing one single crochet in the next two stitches. And then this last turning over stitch, so this is kind of a sideways stitch, you're going to put, and make sure you're grabbing, I can't do it like that, I have to do it like a normal person. I'll show you after. <laughs> that stitch with the two pieces, oh, you're really high. Um, two single crochets in this last stitch. Chain one, turn your work. We're going to do two single crochets. So we're increasing as we go. This is the two single crochets in the stitch. It's an increase. So two single crochets in that stitch. You're going to see it written with brackets around it. And it means same space. You're going to do four single crochets across. And then two single crochets in the last stitch. Which will be your turning over stitch. Chain one, turn your work. So we're going to keep going like that for the next row. Two single crochets in this first stitch. You're going to do six single crochets across. And then in this last turning over stitch, you're going to put two single crochets. Chain one, turn your work. Your next round, you're just going to do 10 single crochets. So one in each stitch. You have 10 stitches. Chain one, turn your work. Round six, you're going to do two single crochets in this first stitch. You're going to do eight single crochets across and then two single crochets in the last stitch. Chain one, turn your work. Round seven, two single crochets in your first stitch. You're going to do 10 single crochets across and then two single crochets in your last stitch. Chain one, turn your work. This row is going to be a little bit different. You're going to do six single crochets.
you're going to increase the next stitch, which means you're going to put two single crochets in that middle stitch. And then you're going to do seven single crochets to the end. Chain one, turn your work. Round nine, you're going to put two single crochets in this first stitch. You're going to do six single crochets. You're going to put two single crochets into this next stitch. You're going to do six single crochets. And then in this last stitch, you're going to put two single crochets. Chain one, turn your work. So we're starting to get this shape by doing that. Round 10, you're going to do nine single crochets. Your next stitch is going to get two single crochets in the same space. And then you're going to do eight single crochets. Chain one, turn your work. Round 11. You're going to do two single crochets in this first stitch. You're going to do eight single crochets. You're going to do two single crochets in this next stitch. You're going to do eight single crochets. And in this last stitch, you're going to put two single crochets in that last space. Chain one, turn your work. So do you see what kind of a shape we're getting by doing this? It's going to help when we go to sew it. <laughs> Round 12, you're going to put two single crochets in this first stitch. You're going to do nine single crochets. You're going to do two single crochets in this next stitch. Then you're going to do ten single crochets. And then two single crochets in this last stitch. Chain one, turn your work. For the next six rows, you should have 25 stitches. For the next six rows, I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these 25 stitches. And I will see you on the other side. So this is what you should have, this is what it should look like. So I'm going to fasten off, I still have this rounded shape a little bit. 
So you need a sewing tail. A long sewing tail. This is not an easy thing to do. So I'm going to come back with my butt. So now I'm literally on the first ring. So I'm on the first ring now. <laughs> Let's see if this works out any better for me. I struggled with my first one as well. It's a really nice look, however. Um, trying to get it to look like that is another story. It's also up to you how high, it, how tall it stands up, right? So I just want to make sure that these are even. So that's what I did. And then I used my thing and I sewed it all around. So I'm like baby carriage at this point. So my battery's going to die. So, um see what I can get done on camera first. So you probably sew way better than me. But I just went down and out. And then you go back up the same hole and go right next door to where you just were. And you do that all the way around. Go back down the next hole. Pop out a hole. Just make sure you're popping out a hole. Go back up that same hole. And come up next door. So that's how I sewed mine on. That's what you should have. That's getting stuffed. The windshield's getting sewn in. So we need to get our white. So when I first made my uh, windshield for this, I sewed it on. Sorry, you can't even see me. Let me zoom out. When I first made my windshield for this, I had sewn the windshield on to the yellow before I sewed it to the body, which ended up being a huge mistake. So this time I'm doing it a little bit differently, so hopefully it's easier. So I've sewn this on first, and then we're going to put the windshield in. Uh, we're going to stuff it and then put the windshield in or, you know, sew, sew it part way and then shove some stuffing in there. So hopefully it works out better that way than it did the other way. So we might as well just make all the windows while we have our white out. So the front window. You're going to chain 11 and then do 10 single crochets back up. I can come back down here. And for the next four rows, you're just going to put one single crochet in each of these 10 stitches. And then you can fasten off. <coughs> so this is what you should have. 
So two, four, five, all together, because we did our first 11 single crochets after our chain. You can fasten off the sewing tail. Um, you can choose to sew this on with white or yellow. It doesn't really matter, I don't think. So we need to sew this window on. Let me come out. Make sure, I'm gonna stuff mine a little bit at the back. So make sure you're getting down at the sides. You gotta shape this as you stuff it. All right, <clears throat> so let's count up eight stitches from the side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that is the stitch. I'm gonna start, oh, I just lost it. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's where I'm gonna start <clears throat> my windshield at the eighth stitch. Just so I know that it's going to be even. And I'm gonna sew the top on first, even though I'm gonna to have to probably get another piece of white, but just so I know that my top is even. Make sure you're hitting every stitch. I'm just grabbing the front loops underneath there. It's super important to make sure you're going stitch for stitch. So that should be in the middle of everything. My car is a little lopsided because that's down. I don't know if you can see by looking at it. That goes down here. This goes down further. So mine's a little lopsided already because the card filled up. Anyway, um, my car is, my thing is gonna be lopsided. I will try to fake it as much as I can. So that it doesn't look so bad. So anyway, just keep going around now that you've got your top in the middle where it's supposed to be. So make sure, because it's not completely stuffed yet, so just make sure that you know you're following this same line. Because the last thing you need is this window to be popped out more than the car part. So I'm at a corner. So down here, I think I was the second stitch up. But because mine is lopsided, I'm just going to kind of pretend. So before we sew this side, we need to finish stuffing it. As awkward as that probably looked for you, that was actually easier than when I did it, when it was flat for some reason, because I just couldn't seem to, I don't know. I don't sew, I don't sew well, so I don't know. So it's up to you how much stuffing you put in yours. Um, I wanted my windshield fairly flat. Um, it is a beetle though, so it's up to you. To do that, that keeps my windshield pretty flat. 
So I think I'm good. I'm going to finish sewing my side up. So that's my window all sewn up. Just like that. So my corners actually turned out better than when I built it or when I sewed it on flat. My corners actually turned out way better. So um, I'm just going to go up here and I'm going to make a knot even though it's on the outside. You're probably never going to see it. So I'm just going to grab like one or two little pieces. I'm going to make a knot to so go through the loop. So kind of just try to push that knot right, 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 right down. So when you weave, that knot is going to get sucked in backwards and you won't even see it. So it's right here somewhere, but you can't see it because it got sucked inside. So um, because I did my knot, I don't really have to seriously weave or anything. So there we go. It's the beginning of my beetle. It looks funny now. And now you're probably questioning. I wish I hadn't uh, come down so far over here. But it, so while we have our white out, let's do our other two little windows. Um, we have a back one and two small ones to do. And they're super duper quick. So let's do the back window. The back window, you're going to chain 12 and do 11 single crochets. You can come back up here. So do 11 single crochets up, which will take you right to the very last stitch because the 12th stitch is, was still on our hook when we started. So. We had 11 working stitches. Chain one, turn your work. I weave this in on my next rows, but you don't have to do that. It can be awkward as you probably could tell by my last window. I just don't pull tight. So I make sure I hold a little piece here just so this knot doesn't get out of shape. So for your next round, I just want you to put one single crochet in each of those 11 stitches. So if you've weaved him in, you can snip him off. So for your next round, chain one, turn your work. You're going to see this written as SC2 tog, which is single crochet two together. So a decrease. So go into your first stitch, pull up a loop, second stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through all three. That's an SC2 tog. Then you're going to do seven single crochets and then the last two, you're going to SC2 tog. That's my seven single crochets. I got two stitches left, so I'm going to SC2 tug those. So pull up a loop, go in your second stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three. Chain one, turn your work. You should have nine stitches for the next two rows. You're just going to put one single crochet in each of these nine stitches, and then you can fasten off. So yarn over, fasten off with a sewing tail.
when you pin this so the small side is on the bottom the large side is at the top pin it low enough where this looks like a back trunk it, you want a lot up here because it's a beetle that we're building so the smaller side up here the larger side up here Just make sure it's in the middle <laughs> that's something that I wouldn't do make sure it's in the middle and then we sew So the two little side windows are super duper quick and easy. So we'll get that going and then we're all done with the white. Well, till our headlights and then we use some white for the magic ring. So I'm going to do one side window with you and then you can just go and do the other one. So super quick. You're going to chain five and do four single crochets. For the next four rows, you're going to do four single crochets. So that's the window. You can fasten off the sewing tail. So I'm going to put this on the screen. Go ahead and make two of them. Um, I'm going to say sew them on. Hold on a second. Sew them on. That's where I put mine, but you can put yours wherever. And I will meet you on the other side. So I got my windows sewn on. Um, we're going to do our bumpers next. So um, I'm going to get my gray, get whatever bumper color you're using. And we're not starting, <laughs> we're going to start with magic ring. If you don't like magic rings, you don't want to do a magic ring, you can do a chain two and then put everything into that first stitch, which would be six. I got the hiccups. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to make a magic ring of six single crochets. This is just a four weight as well. So, um, your next round is going to be one single crochet and an increase. So again, amigurumi, no slip stitching or chaining. Go right into the stitch and make your stitch. So that's one single crochet. That's your first stitch, that's where your marker goes. Your next stitch gets the increase of two single crochets in the same space. And repeat going to repeat this three times around and you're going to have nine stitches when you're done. So your sequence should end just before your marker of the increase. For the next 21 rows, <laughs> for the next 21 rows you're just going to put one single crochet in each of these nine stitches and then I'll meet you back here to uh, decrease so follow the screen prompts 
21 rows, 9 stitches. It goes super duper fast. And I'll see you back here to decrease. So don't fasten off because we're not done our bumper. We still have to decrease. So that's my 21 rows. That's what it should look like. So we're going to decrease a bit and then we're going to fasten off. So I just want you to do a one single crochet decrease because that's the increase we used. So that's one single crochet. And then it doesn't really matter for a fender what kind of decrease you use. So I'm just going to do a regular one. So do this all the way around. Again, you're just going to do it three times. And your decrease is right before your marker. And you can fasten off. So you have to make another one. One in the front, one in the back. So I will show you how to... Um, we don't really need to show you. We're going to cinch the top. That's what we're going to do. And then um, poke, kind of poke out the side type of deal. So go in the front loop of the one stitch and this exact same thing as we did before. Since your top closed and then this gets no stuffing by the way. If you want a little bit of girth, I guess you can put stuffing in this. Um, I do not. So I'm going to secure that cinch with a knot. And then, supposed to match the other side, but I mean, it kind of obviously looks funny. I'm going to go right down the top of it, and I'm going to poke out the side where I want to start sewing. So, my theory is it kind of pulls that bump down a little bit. So, go ahead and make your second bumper, and I will meet you right back here. So I've got both my fenders done. Um, I'm not going to sew them on just yet because um, we need to kind of put everything on in unison so that we know the placement. So just kind of set yours aside and we'll get to making the great big fenders. They're going to be made with your car color, not your bumper color. So I'm going to go back to my mint. You need to make four of these, so I'm going to do one with you and then leave you to make the other four. You're going to make a magic ring of six single crochets. That's my six single crochets. And again, this is going to be Emma Gurumi first round is going to be one single crochet and an increase so right into your first stitch with your one single crochet put my needle away and then your next stitch gets the increase of two single crochets in the same space so three times around one single crochet two single crochets one single crochet two single crochets so you should have nine stitches. In the next nine rows, you're going to put one single crochet in each of those nine stitches. And then we're going to increase.
So that's my nine rows. Um, I don't move my marker every time. I just count to 18 and then go on my marker, so, or on my row counter. So, um, we're going to start increasing now. We're going to do a two single crochet increase. So that's number one. Your marker is always number one. That's number two. And then your increase of two single crochets in the same space. So repeat that all the way around. This will give you 12 stitches. Your next round is going to be three single crochets and an increase. This will put you up to 15 stitches. That's where we're going to stop. That's number one, two, and three. And then this next stitch gets your increase of two single crochets in the same space. So repeat that. You do everything three times, so. That's how you know you're doing everything right. And in your last stitch with your sequence of two single crochets in the last stitch, you know you've done everything right. I still have the hiccups and I'm trying to contain them. <laughs> so that's as far as we're going as far as increases. So now for the next seven rows, I want you to put one single crochet in each of those 15 stitches. And I will see you on the other side. So this is my seven rows. Of course, again, I don't use my marker, but I know this was round one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Always count on this side of your uh, uh, hook. <laughs> uh, what's that thing called? So, um, I have lost my So, um, fasten off, you need, we're going to whip stitch this shut, and then you need a sewing tail. So we have to make four of these. So I'm going to put the pattern on the screen, and you can um, make your other three. I'm just going to show you what we do to the end of it so that you're fully prepared when we come back and again we're not sewing anything on yet anyway because we haven't even made the tires so so we're just going to whip stitch this shut you a, a whip stitch is generally back loop to back loop but you can just go through all the stitches if you want to so we're just going to close the top up So go ahead, make your other three, and I will meet you right back here. So I got all four of my fenders made, so we can just set that aside. So we're going to do our tires. I'm going to use this sparkly red heart. Sparkle with love, I think it is. The collection is with love. But I'm going to start with white because my hubcaps are white. 
So it's literally um, just the first couple of rows done with white and then the rest of it is black. So you're going to make a magic ring of six single crochets. Excuse me, I just sneeze. Your first round is going to be two single crochets in each stitch with your white, and then we're going to go to black. So I'm just going to count to 12, putting two in each stitch. This is my 12th stitch. Oops. This is my 12th stitch, so I don't want to finish it with white. I want to finish my 12th stitch with black. With black, I'm going to do one single crochet increase. I don't really need a marker because I have a change here. I just want to make sure all my numbers are going to be right. So that's my one single crochet. I'm going to weave in all this crap back here. So your next stitch cuts the increase of two single crochets in the same space. Try not to get stuck on everything. So my black is really thick, so I got to pull up on my my stitches because it's going to roll over if I don't. So if you have the same problem with your black being thicker than the rest of yours just pull up and then finish the stitch. Plus it doesn't help that I'm weaving either. So I don't need to weave all the way around. So I weave this in. I'm just going to cut these two off. Get rid of my white. I just have my white straggler I started with, which is fine. I'll just tuck that down. So your next round is going to be two single crochets and an increase. That's number one. Two. And then next stitch gets the increase of two single crochets in the same space. And repeat. So bring it up to 24 stitches. So that's my 24 rows, about as big as I want my tire. So for the next three rows, you're just going to put one single crochet in each of these 24 stitches, and then we'll come back and decrease. So this is what three rounds looks like. So your next round is going to be two single crochets and a decrease. That's number one, two, and then a decrease. So I'm doing invisible. Even though it's black, you're probably hardly going to see it. I am doing another row after this, so I'm going to do invisible.
Your next round is going to be one single crochet and a decrease and this will bring you down to 12 stitches and that's as far as we go. That's one single crochet so you jump right into your decrease. So that is it. Fasten off with a cinching tail. And a sewing tail. A long sewing tail. Because we're going to go through and through, right? So put some stuffing in this guy. Try not to overstuff it. It's the exact size that we kind of need, so there's no reason to overstuff this. And this is also getting kind of squeezed down. So, squeezed together. And you certainly don't want to see any white through this black tire. Just gonna stick some. I like to take a hole and then fill the hole. So I think that's good for my tire. You gotta make sure you're gonna fill all of these the same too because you don't want your tires to look like they're different sizes. So we're gonna cinch. I know it's gonna be hard to see but we're cinched the same way we've been cinching this whole time in the front loop, out the front loop. We're going to do a little, something a little bit different though with this than just a normal, well we're going to just do a normal cinch but I'll show you what we do after. So I'm at the last two stitches anyway for my cinch get into that last one. So pull this closed and again you're going to want to secure your cinch so pop across get my scissors out of the way. Pop across go through the loopy loop give it a wiggle. This particular one there's no need to cross do it because we're going to go through and we're going to come out so go in so my leads here I'm going to go in right kind of beside it this is my lead there we go so I'm going in about that far apart I'm going to pop out and don't worry about this being black you're not going to you're not going to notice it so I'm going to pop out on one side of my magic ring just like that When I pull this through, I'm going to use my finger, oh sorry, I use my finger to stop it to keep that loop. I'm going to come across here to the other side of the magic ring and I'm going to go back in and up. It doesn't matter where you pop out at the back. Pull that through and now we're going to go through the loop because we're going to make a knot and we're going to pull and sink this in all at the same time. So pull and keep pulling to sink in your hubcap so that it's set like that. So you don't see your black string much and nobody's going to be looking at that anyway. And that's your tire. That's it. So you can... Um, put another knot in here but I don't think it's necessary because going through the loop and then pulling was the knot. So this is now just ready to sew onto the car. So the thickness of this needs to be every single tire so that it doesn't look funny. So if you need to keep pulling this you can keep pulling this to get it down. 
so it has to sink down like that. Well, it doesn't have to. You can do whatever you want. You're tired. So uh, we need to make three more of these, and then I'll meet you back here, and then we can just put everything together and then get the lights and the eyes done, and then we're going to be done our little bug. So I have all my tires done. So now everything's done. We can start putting this guy together. Move my stuff out of the way. So first things first, obviously, is we need to put the tires on. So um, I don't technically sew my tires on. I have one of these really long needles. Figure out where you're going to put it. And then make sure you come out two, three, four, between the fourth and fifth row. Two, three, four. Around the same area. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four down from my thing. So once you figure out and put your other tire through and go through them all um, I think that's too far back but I don't know so I'm gonna have to put my other tire here I'm gonna have to put a fender on to see and you're going to have to do the same thing because I don't know how tight you crochet. So these fenders, these, this big part of the fender goes to the back. And it kind of goes like this. So that's how the fender is going to get sewn on. So it kind of angles back toward. That's how you get the shape back there. Just to see, because my other fender needs to fit in this area as well as. And there's plenty of room there. Now I didn't leave a whole lot of room on my other car, but I think that's good. So I think I will leave my tire there. So just make sure you don't pull your tire out of shape. Make sure they're still big and and fat. So I don't sew my tires on. They have fuzzies. Ugh. I um from here I will go down and meet up with this guy here and then I just tie a knot. So now I'm going to go down into the middle here. I'm going to be pulling tight enough that it's not. So now I'm just popping out the bottom. I'm not going into anything. I'm trying not to. I'm just popping out the bottom. So when you pull that just looks like it's the inner workings of the tire. And then I tie these. them off a bit and then I just tie them because I think it's fun for the kids to be able to still move the tires so when you pull try not to pull too tight you still want the children to be able to play with those it's not so fun when you're trying to sew the fenders on but fun for the kids after so I just tied three tight knots 
and then I'm going to go back under here. You don't really need to weave, you just need to move your yarn and pull them out of the way. And I wouldn't worry about whether you're going to tie this or not. And that's how I put on my tires. So they still move, but they're not going anywhere. It's all tied together. So um, go ahead and put your front ones on. There we go. So my tires are on. So then these fenders, like I already showed you. Figure out how you want this at the back. So however this is at the back, it needs to be angled. So once the two, I'm going to put my other one on, just to show you how this is supposed to go. Find my pin. It's hard when the tires want to move. That is the only part that's tough as these tires want to spin. So we're not sewing into the tires, I'm just pinning it, in case you're wondering, because we still want the tires to spin. So I'm just going to, these have to be even too, so just make sure, yeah, mine's not. Just make sure these are even as well. So once everything is in place, then our bumper goes on to the back of this. So you still have that little space right there like you would with a normal bumper. So the bumper gets sewn to these things. So after everything's said and done, the tires still move a little bit once the once this is sewn on, they may not move as much, but the kids are still going to be able to play with them. So go ahead and get your bumpers sewn on. Um, I'm going to do mine in fast motion, so but you should still be able to see what I'm doing. Now for starters, I'm on the wrong side, so I'm just going to stick my... sewing needle in and just pop out the other side because I need to just start sewing over here. So as you can see, I sewed it only along the side and down. 
So it's not sewn to the tire, it's just around the tire. So that's how I want you to sew your fenders on. And then I'm going to meet up with this guy after I sew him on. I'm going to meet up with him in the middle and I'm going to tie them in a knot, cut it off, poke it down. So that's the plan. So that hurt the fingers. <laughs> I got bad hands. Yeah, I know. I'm in the wrong line of business. So they didn't quite get him in the right spot, but hopefully you don't notice it when the fenders go on. So that's our little car so far. Um, this won't look like this when the fenders get put on. The fenders get sewn to that. So... So they go right, they get sewn right to those two big ends like that. They don't get sewn to the car or the tires. They get sewn to the fenders. And there's really no nice way of doing it. Um, I tried to do it without going all the way through. The reason being is because I wanted my fenders to... Um, like I wanted to puff them up after, like make them look. Sorry, my camera loves to shut off at the worst times. So um, I wanted them to look, um, you know, like round. So I literally just took some fender and took the bottom part of my bumper and went in and out. Well, I didn't on my first one, but this is what I'm going to do on my second one. Because I really don't want them to be flat. So it's not the easiest thing to do, especially on camera. But that's what I'm doing. So oh, that's my bumper sewn on. I haven't straightened it or anything yet. So um, that's our car. Uh, so we need yellow and gray to do the front lights and then red to do our back lights and then we are done our little beetle. So let's do that. They're so quick. So 
So with white, you're going to make a magic ring. I'm still using my four. You're going to put six single crochets in here. six single crochet so I'm gonna pull it before I slip out so I want to change to gray but it's easier to do it after you've pulled it closed so slip out of that stitch till you have your two loops on and then switch to your gray color I pull down on my white so with your gray color, you're going to do two single crochets in each stitch around and get into this first one. I am going to weave in my gray tail, but not my white stuff, just my gray tail, just to keep everything nice and tight. So two single crochets in each stitch around for a total of 12. That's it. Just make sure your metal's pull, pulled closed completely. So you can fasten off and make your other one. You'll need a sewing tail. And then this stuff here at the back, I just tied in a knot after I've pulled my middle closed, just so my middle stays closed. I'm going to tie these in a knot. That way I know that middle's not going to open up again. If I can, my, my fingers are so sore from sewing that stuff on. It's hard to even do that. So I cut it off leaving a nubby. Probably gonna have to cut that shorter actually. Cut my gray nubby from when I weaved. So that's our headlight. Let's do our tail light and then I'll put the both patterns on the screen. You can make the other ones. Um, this is easy. This is just a magic ring of six single crochets to start and then you're going to do two single crochets in each stitch around and that is it for your brake lights that's it for your brake light so you can fasten off this so I'm gonna put the patterns for both up on my screen you can make your second one fasten off with a sewing tail and I will see you on the other side as far as this one goes I just tie this in a knot by the way before I let you go I'll tie this in a knot
so I have all my stuff done. So these go right here. Right here. So everything's above the bumper. Including the headlights. And right here. So that's how everything's gonna go. Just like that. And then we are gonna be done this car. So when I glue on small things like this, I like to use glue generally because I don't like the outside lifting. But in this case, you want the outside to roll up. So over time, they're going to roll up like that because that's what their actual headlights look like. So I'm not using glue in this instance because I need these to roll up. Remember the the bug? Um, I, don't, I don't know if you guys remember when it used to open like an eyeball. Oh, I love those lights. It was so cool. I'm going way, way back now. So you don't need to be super serious about um, sewing this on either. Like every single stitch like you normally would. There, we're all done building our guy. Now the only thing left, which is optional, you don't need to do it, is putting the eyes on him. So um, I used two weight cotton to do my eyes because it was the only way really that I could get um, the eyes small enough to fit because it's a small space. So if you have any two weight or you have any, like any, get whatever yarn that you need um, these are the colors that I used. They're probably going to be the same colors I use again. And I'll meet you right back here. So I used a 3.5 E hook to go with my 2 weight yarn. because it is super, 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 super small. So I've got my colors. This is what I'm using. These are all the same. This is this Cotton Fair stuff. So it actually calls for four millimeter, but I'm using a 3.5 because I want it to be nice and tight. So we're gonna start with black. And we're going to do a magic ring of six single crochets. That's my six. Uh, I'm just going to be careful on how tight I close this right now because it is so super small and I got such fat little fingers so I'm not going to close mine all the way. It's just easier for me to do it that way. So with your black, in the next three stitches you're going to do two single crochets in each 
of the next three stitches. And then I'll worry about closing my magic ring. <laughs> so there's one two and three. So on my second stitch in that third I'm going to switch to blue but before I do all that this is where I'm going to pull my ring closed. So I'm going to switch to blue on that second stitch in the third stitch. Pull down on my black, make sure everything's nice and tight. And with blue, I'm going to do two single crochets in the next three stitches. Sorry, I don't work well with really tiny stuff. This is why on my channel, you don't see me making these tiny little horses and these tiny little frogs and these tiny little... Uh, number one, I don't see the point. Number two, my hands can't handle it. So, <laughs> don't do well. That's my first stitch I managed to get done. But these eyes are super cute, so I really wanted to do them. And my last stitch... It gets my two. I'm going back to black. So grab my black and finish that last stitch with my black. And with black, I'm going to do six single crochets. And then I'm going to switch to white. This is my sixth stitch, so I'm going to pull up a loop. I'm going to go to my white. Oh, I got, I got a, something going on here. See, See? this sixth stitch gets chained to white. Pull down on your black and everything. And with white, I'm going to do six stitches. So that is my six stitches. This is where I fasten off. So I'm going to go into this next stitch, which is the black, and I'm going to fasten off. So I'm going to use the white to sew it with. So you just need a sewing tail. that's what your eye looks like when it's done. So I I put some glinting in the black part. So everything here at the back can get snipped off. And for safekeeping, you can tie these together. So a loosey-goosey first knot, well not loosey-goosey, but not a tight first knot, but a tight second knot. And then you can cut that off short. Same thing with these two. I will be using glue for my eyes because I don't want them to roll up. 
And I weaved in this white a little bit, so I'm just going to snip that off. So, and then as far as the glinting goes, I just take a little piece of white. You can use a little dab of glue if you want. I mean, it doesn't matter how the white gets there, as long as it gets there. Puffy paint. I've seen people use puffy paint. I just sneeze. So come up through the back with your white and then down wherever you go down. And that's your little piece of glinting for the eyes. And then you can make a knot here too. And these are small enough. that two of them will fit on the windshield. So let's do our second one together just because I know that the way I wrote the pattern is probably might be confusing. I know it seems so simple but for those that don't want to wait for me go ahead build your second one. I will put the pattern on the screen just for you. So we're going to do magic ring of six single crochets with your black, not with your four millimeter, <laughs> with your 3.5. That's six with my black. And again, I'm not going to pull it all the way closed because it's too difficult to deal with. The next three stitches, I'm going to put two single crochets of black. So now that I'm in, I can pull this. You don't have to wait. I just, so hard to get into that first stitch. So two single crochets in each stitch for the next three stitches. And then we go to blue. So on the second stitch of the third stitch, we go to blue. And then with blue, you're going to do two single crochets in the next three stitches. So on the <clears throat> sixth stitch, or the second stitch of the third stitch, <laughs> you're going to go back to black. And with black, you're going to do six single crochets. This is my sixth stitch. This is where I'm going to switch to white. So that sixth stitch is in the blue stitch from the row before. I should have mentioned that on the last one. So I'll pull down on everything. I'm going to weave my white tail in. One last thing I have to cut and worry or tie and worry about. And I'm going to do six stitches with my white. So I'm going to start in that same blue stitch.
that's my six stitches and then I'm going to go into this last black stitch to do my fasten off Oh, this small stuff is difficult for me to work with, but I do it, I mean, I do it, to make my, my eyes look good, but, so hard on my hands. So I'm going to put my glinting on this side, because I had it on the other side before. And the eyes are completely optional. I'm going to repeat that again. The eyes are optional. You don't even need to be doing this. So just make sure when you tie that knot, you're not pulling that too tight that it's... I see my thing came back open. Not happy about that. So... We are putting eyebrow lash things up there if you want to. Well, we don't need to do eyelashes. I didn't do the lashes up here. I just put eyebrows. So make sure you just leave enough room for that. Oh, <laughs> might be helpful if it's hard to kind of see what it's going to look like when you've got it not sewn on. So obviously the black is on the top. The My eyes are completely not even in the right spot. The black is on the top, the blue and the white are on the bottom. And that's the eyes I chose to do. My glinting's off, but I don't care. So I use glue to sew mine on like I already stated. You can do whatever your little heart desires. So those are my eyes, at least I got them sewn on somewhat straight. So if you want to add eyebrows, you just take some black, fairly long piece, so you can do both eyebrows. So it doesn't matter where you come in, it just matters where you pop out. Just leave a little tail. So I'm going to pop out over here. I'm going to make eyelashes because I didn't do that on my other one, but you don't have to. So I'm going to make big eyelashes. That extend the cab just because I can so once my other one's done I'm going to have to glue my eyebrow into place anyway I'm going to pop out here trying to match this eyebrow on that side. And we try not to sneeze again. Anyway, that's my eyelashes. I don't know how stupid that looks, but it's mine. I'm keeping it. I'm not giving it away. So I'm going to make the match. So the only thing I find with the two weight is if you actually might have to glue it in place because it doesn't really like to sit up on its own if you wanted it to sit up 
Far weight's a little different, but not this two eight stuff. So once you're done, you just pop out somewhere. You can tie this in a knot before you um, cut it off. Poke it down. There's my eyes. There's my little lashes. Yeah, they extend the cab. That's okay. I like it like that. So, there we go, we're all done our, our bug. Once it comes together, it doesn't look so bad. <laughs> it's the process that you kind of go, oh my gosh, I hated this. The whole time I was making it, I hated it. My husband kept saying, it look, oh, look, my lights aren't even even. The whole time my husband was like, it looks fine, it looks good to me. And the whole time I'm like, oh my God. I don't know if I'm going to do a video. I don't like this. I don't know if I like it. But then once I sewed everything on and did everything. And everything I do on my channel is my own design. I might see a picture on Pinterest or I might see just a picture in general and go, oh my God, I want to try to make that. And then I design it. I don't copy other creators. I create my own. This one's just a titch bigger because it's different yarn, but um, yeah, I like the eyelashes better on this one. Um, I like the way I sewed the bumper on better. That's how I sewed it on before, going in and out through the whole entire thing, and then I tried to pull up where it dented, and you just can't. So that's why I sewed it on like this this time. So I actually prefer the bumpers on this one better than this one. Anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And check out my membership button. Um, if you hit join, you can join for $2.99 or $4.99. And that will get you features that you wouldn't normally, perks that you wouldn't normally have. Like free PDFs, um, early videos, access to early videos. Um, emojis and stuff if I ever go live and I, I really have no plans on ever going live I don't know what I would do during a live stream but um, uh, different things like that so the $4.99 will get you the PDF files for free and um, early videos anyway I'm babbling thanks for joining me guys I'll see you in the next video